Joshua took over leadership from Moses to bring Israel into the Promised Land. After him came a series of judges, or notable chieftains of various tribes, who led Israel through a repeated cycle of apostasy, punishment and rescue. How important are the words even today, be strong and of good courage? Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. How did Rahab choose the lesser of two wrongs? Do we also sometimes face similar dilemmas? The men left when it was time to close the gate at dark, but I don't know where the men went. Hurry, chase after them. You might catch up with them. Did God condemn her lie or praise her intent? By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she'd given a friendly welcome to the spies. Though she handled things imperfectly, did Rahab's deed still receive praise? Does that give us hope, who also handle life's dilemmas very imperfectly? And in the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by a different route? Why were those entering the Promised Land circumcised? Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they'd not circumcised. What more important circumcision was prophesied? Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, so that you may live. Is a legalistic letter of the law physical circumcision required under the new covenant? No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God, and true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law, rather it's a change of heart produced by the Spirit, and a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. What's the only thing that counts? For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. How obedient was Joshua? As the Lord had commanded Moses his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua, and so Joshua did. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. How obedient was Israel after Joshua in driving out the perverted, child-murdering Canaanites? Nevertheless, the children of Israel didn't drive out the Geshurites nor the Makathites, but Geshur and Makath live within Israel to this day. Was the land divided fairly into private hands by Lot? Then Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord. There Joshua divided up the shares of the land for the Israelites. What can we learn from Joshua's farewell sermon? Therefore be very courageous to keep and to do all that's written in the book of the law of Moses. You shall hold fast to the Lord. Take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God. What else did Joshua say that we also must choose? Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. 
And if it's evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can overly much involvement with the world around us lead the church astray? What often happens when a new generation leads? And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Is the gospel in some ways like war? How did Gideon seek to confirm God's will? Then Gideon said to God, If you're going to save Israel through me, as you've spoken, behold, I'm putting a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there's dew on the fleece only, and it's dry on all the ground, then I'll know that you will save Israel through me, as you've spoken. And it was so. Why did God send only a small company of 300 warriors against an enemy numerous as locusts? The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. How did Samson struggle to obey God? and after a disastrous life, finally fulfill his duty in a suicidal act of self-sacrifice. Then he shouted, Let me die with the Philistines. He pushed against the columns as hard as he could, and the temple collapsed with the Philistine rulers and everyone else still inside. Samson killed more Philistines when he died than he'd killed during his entire life. What happens to a church when everyone does what's right in his own eyes, rather than being satisfied with the land that God had given them? The tribe of Dan fell into idolatry and left its place for a land they lusted after. What did their five spies say? They said, Arise and let's go up against them, for we've seen the land and behold, it's very good. And will you do nothing? Don't be slow to go, to enter in and possess the land. Is this why Dan's not mentioned among the twelve tribes in Revelation 7? Is this also a parallel to Judas's betrayal? What happens to a church not satisfied with its spiritual inheritance? 